Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream. I'm going to do your November the 15th spiritual principle a day in a meditation. Let's go ahead and get into it. The title of it is Love for the Sake of Our Growth. The love we share in NA means we care enough to save each other's lives. That comes from the Guiding Principles, Tradition 2 Spiritual Principles. Attending meetings lets us see the myriad of ways in which members practice the spiritual principle of love. We observe the pre-meeting rituals with warm welcomes all around. We recognize the love and trust it takes for us to share our pain, our breakthroughs, and our misadventures, or to offer loving support by listening, nodding, and passing tissues. After the meeting, we may catch a glimpse of a small group or two or three pe members who have stepped away from the group for a private conversation. Some of us have been pulled into such a discussion only to discover that our behavior was the topic. This may not have struck us as loving at that time. As one member shared, a couple of home group members suggested that I get to the meeting on time if I want to hug all my friends before I took a seat. I was a bit embarrassed, but learned to enter a bit more discreetly when I'm late. With hindsight, we can see the loving action members like these take to protect the atmosphere recovery in our meetings and teach newer members how to behave. Love isn't always gentle. Sometimes we show love by saying, we love you, but not your behavior. Another addict shared, love is not simply an emotion, it's an act, also an action. The action of love is the effort we choose to put into how we carry the message of an A. We share our recovery to save another addict's lives and it's one of the most loving actions we can take. It may not be convenient or easy, but the work is well worth it when we see a fellow addict grow into a productive member of society and pass the NA message onto other suffering addicts. This is the work of love. I will share the lessons I was taught when I first came around. Today, I will pass along the love that saved my life. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the we version of serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. Thank you, God. Grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, please and thank you. Powerful meditation. Talking about love for the sake of our growth. And I think that's true. I think that we are each other's eyes and ears. And I believe that um, there is a correction, right? That comes from people that care about you, that is intended to help you, right? A lot of times we don't take constructive criticism well, but it's helpful if we do. The atmosphere of recovery should be maintained at all times in any meeting. And the fact that someone would pull me aside or pull you aside and say, hey, we I noticed this about you and it's very distracting. That can be embarrassing. It can be hard to deliver that kind of constructive criticism, but it can also be hard to receive it. But I think this is where we do the hard stuff so that when we go out into society, we're more productive members of that society. And so it's helpful for us to be thinking about how do I receive constructive criticism and how do I give it? And how are my shares in meetings helpful? Or are they negative? Do they pull people down? I had a very real experience. I don't know how long ago, but I, was, I would say within the last year. There's this meeting I like to make in person at seven in the morning. It's easier to do when the kids aren't in school, right? And I would walk into that meeting, oh my goodness, usually about 7, 10, 
around 710 because I have a uh, child that loves to wake up when I wake up. As soon as I wake up, they wake up. And but matter of fact, this was, wasn't even summertime because the reason I was uh, arriving at that particular meeting around 710, if I'm recalling correct, is that his drop off at school is seven in the morning. So this was last school year. It wasn't even during the summer. Um, and I drop him off. We leave the house at exactly seven o'clock and they're not supposed to be dropped off any sooner than seven fifteen, seven twenty. So when I drop him off, I always sit a little bit and wait until a couple of the other parents pull up with their child so that he's not the only one waiting and when we all see each other's vehicles we're like okay there's four of them what could happen to four of them all together right and so usually I'm the first or second car I let him out the other cars begin to let their children out and we all pull off a little after you know 705 710 at the latest I've sat longer sometimes because it just seemed like it was a slow morning. But as soon as I would drop him off, I would head over to that meeting, which was a good five minute drive. So I would arrive at this meeting. The shares generally or the reading we would be doing would already be taking place. And the meeting is very brief, right? Because people are trying to go to work, but it's the most amazing thing. There's always time for people to share until they're done sharing. There's never a timer. It's kind of like in this particular home group, everyone is so hospitable, right? The atmosphere recovery is there that literally I could arrive right after dropping him off and the room would be dead silent by quarter to eight with still 15 minutes to go. Not because people are not sharing. I may have heard 10 people share, but people share until they're done and they're considerate naturally of one another. So they will stop sharing when they've shared what they needed to share, but it seems like there's always time. But I would have to arrive at this meeting. I could never make it when it started. And at that time, they weren't even doing the meeting on weekends. It was just Monday through Friday, which was ridiculous, right, to me, um, because I would love to make a 7 a.m. meeting. And so I would walk in and I would try to pick the seat. I would pick the next seat that was closest to the door, right? So whichever direction I would go in, I would get the seat that was closest to the door. So I wouldn't have to walk all the way through the meeting. To get a seat. This one particular day, I don't even know what was going on. I arrived before the meeting started. And there was this man, he sits in the same seat he always sits in. And he was like, Oh, my stream. You in the meeting early? Huh? <laughs> well, look at there. And I felt so sorry for him. I felt so sorry for him. I thought to myself, of all the years I've been coming to this particular, I was here before you got here. All the years I've been coming to this particular meeting. And you finally had the audacity to make a comment like that. I felt so sorry for him because I knew he didn't know what was coming. Right. But I felt that level of honesty and tactlessness deserved the same level of honesty and tactlessness. So I sat right down next to him because the meeting wasn't started yet. And I said, you know what? I'm doing good to be alive as depressed as I am. Any meeting I arrive at, whenever I arrive, I feel so blessed. I said, what what I didn't realize is that you were the doorkeeper and someone set you up here to determine what time I, I was coming in the meeting. And immediately, 
immediately he felt so he felt so hurt because what I was saying was the truth and I got up and I picked the furthest seat away from him that I could because I was steaming I was steaming and what he said had weight but he didn't doesn't know my circumstance right doesn't know anything about the life I live or why that happens. So even if we are giving constructive criticism, let's be humble about the way that we do it, right? As it says here that a couple of people pulled someone to the side. Let's be humble and discreet with the way that we do it. Because that really is what love is about. That's what recovery is about. And that's how it should happen. Give people room to receive the correction you want to give them. And hopefully you're giving it in a manner of love. My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed talking to you today. I hope that you have a beautiful day on purpose.